Hi, I just got back from watching Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny and whew, I gotta tell you, I was worried. <laughs> I was worried that it would suck as a lot of modern Hollywood movies do, but it didn't suck. I'm here to tell you, I actually really enjoyed it. I came out thinking that was great. I was entertained and well, here's a spoiler free, com hopefully completely spoiler free review. Let's go. The premise is pretty simple. Indy is old. He's actually, it's his uh, retirement day. He's had his retirement party. If you've seen the trailer, you know, you'll know all this sort of stuff. It's just after the moon landings, the astronauts come back. There's a ticker tape um, parade, of course. And he meets up with his goddaughter, Helena Shaw, played by Phoebe uh, Waller-Bridge. And they go on an adventure to find the Dial of Destiny, which is a uh, relic that um, can change the course of time. So yeah, it's time travel. But I gotta say the time travel in this movie didn't happen the way I expected. Bit more on that later. But uh, yeah, basically um, they go on an adventure. They aren't the only ones looking for the Dial of Destiny of course. There's the Nazis in this. There's a, If you like your Nazi action you're gonna love this movie. In fact the, the first act is absolutely fantastic. Now of course uh, there were several complaints um, that I've seen <laughs> before the release of this movie. One was the, uh, of course, the de-aging of Indy. And really, you know, everyone's nitpicking the, what they saw on the trailer and everything else, but you watch it on the big screen in the theater. I'm here to tell you, it, it looked absolutely great. There's no problems whatsoever. It's totally believable. You don't even notice it. In fact, it really lets them tell a story where a, with a younger Indy. You get to see Indy in his prime again. It's it's actually really good. It really adds value um, to the movie. So I've got no problems whatsoever with the de-aging. I was worried about that, but no, it doesn't suck. It's really good. But you've got to go see it on the big screen in the big cinema. And the next complaint, of course, is, is that, uh, is this another Mary Sue movie? Will she outshine Indy and she can do it all? And yes, I'm not a fan of the Mary Sue direction that Hollywood's uh, been going in Star Wars. Um, but uh, it's actually, I quite enjoyed her in this movie. I think it fits and it works well. She doesn't too, take too much shine off Indy. Yes, okay. She can do it all, okay, but it, it doesn't really, it doesn't feel that bad in this movie. In fact, I quite enjoyed her character and I actually watch another movie with uh, her, that this same character in it, with her same character in it. I've got really no problems whatsoever. There are a couple of scenes where you go, yeah, nah, right? But I, like, <laughs> as a general thing, no, Indy still does his indie stuff. It's absolutely great. Now the first act is absolutely fantastic. It's just non-stop action. In fact, there's quite a lot of action set pieces in this thing. And if you're not a fan of the lot of, of the complaints, you can just watch the first act and it's absolutely fantastic. You get a lot of indie, old school indie action in it. It's absolutely terrific. And the second act is actually, it's like not nearly as uh, bad or as slow as as boring as uh, Crystal Skull. In fact, this movie is, is way better than Crystal Skull. A lot of people say, okay, well, that's not saying much, but I'm actually, you know, I don't hate Crystal Skull. I think it's an okay movie. Yeah, there's a couple of slow points in it, but the first act of Crystal Skull I thought was excellent, and the first act in this one is excellent also. But the second and third acts in this are better than Crystal Skull. So this is way above Crystal Skull, and I think, thought that was an okay movie. So, yay! <laughs> Now I said that Indy and Helena weren't the only ones looking for the Dial of Destiny. In fact, there's actually a third character that goes along with them. You barely even see them in the uh, trailer. And it's an okay addition. It's not great. A lot of the characters aren't uh, fleshed out. The baddie is really good in this. I really like, uh, well, the baddies in this are <laughs> really quite good. They don't flesh out some of those characters uh, extensively, but it's, you know, it's good enough for the purposes of the movie, and it's quite enjoyable. It, the middle doesn't really fall flat. It, I think it's, you know, quite a decently paced movie, even though it is quite long, at like two hours and 20 minutes or something like that. Didn't really feel it. So everyone's looking for this Dial of Destiny thing and yep, they have to go on all these great adventures. There's lots of chase scenes. If you like uh, chase and action scenes in this, you'll probably enjoy this. Um, like I, I'm gonna have to watch it a second and third time to really start like nitpicking and stuff like that. But I came out of this thing 
really enjoying it and thought, yeah, that was that was great. So yeah, this movie doesn't really fall flat. There's just lots of chase scenes. If you love your chase scenes and your action scenes, I think you're going to uh, enjoy this. In fact, every indie fan, I think, is probably going to enjoy this to at least some degree. If you're an indie fan, I think you're going to come away from this going, yeah, that didn't suck. That was actually quite enjoyable. You come out of the theatre going, yeah, I was entertained. Another thing that people talk about is the CGI and, well, it, it once again, you see it on the big screen in 24 frames per second is different to watching it on your little monitor and your pixel peeping and everything. It it really quite it really kind of works on the big screen. Didn't really have a problem with it whatsoever. And it, like even the, you know, racing the horse through the subway thing. <laughs> it's fine. It's indie. And yes, of course, one of everyone's favourite characters, Sulla, he is back in this, not nearly as much as you, know, as you would hope uh, for him to be in, but it was actually more than I was expecting. I thought he'd just do one quick cameo appearance. No, he's in a little bit more than that, and you do get some more Sulla. You get a bit more Sulla than you're expecting, let's just put it that way. And the third act in this was actually quite different to the way I thought it was going to go down. So, in fact, the tra time travel stuff in this didn't happen the way I expected and it's for the better I really I, I won't spoil it because it is quite a spoiler if I actually told you uh, what time travel elements were in this thing and I I was rather satisfied by it actually and I think it's done in a way that adds value to Indy's character as well and that's part of the ending and I've got all bit I was actually pretty choked up at the end of this thing it's as for a fan it's a pretty decent ending once again won't spoil anything but i was pretty happy with it. there's one element of it that you know some people aren't going to like it let's put it that way but personally i thought yeah that worked and yeah i was actually quite choked up at the end so pretty decent ending i was happy with it i walked out of there satisfied and yeah, sure, Indy's old now, but I like a lot of feeling through this movie is you go, like, age really isn't a problem. And of course they de-age him, so you gotta get a lot of extra value there. And as I said, I think that really works. And uh, yeah, there are a few age jokes in there, but heck, even in uh, Raiders, there was an age joke. <laughs> it's not the years, honey, it's the mileage. And is it a send-off for Indy's character? Yes and no. And in fact, I don't want it. I want uh, Indy, I want to think of Indy as, uh, you know, he'll always be ready to go on another adventure. And this watch pretty much delivers in that regard. Anyway, saw it with the two dudes, Sagan and Huxley. They both thoroughly enjoyed it as well. They both gave it 10 out of 10. I wouldn't go that far, but I would I would give that a solid 8 out of 10 for just the way it made me feel. I haven't looked at the other reviews yet, haven't looked at Rotten Tomatoes, don't know what uh, the score or what the other reviews are given, but I'd, I think it's given a solid 8. It, I actually want to go back and pay money to see it again. It's not right up there, but it's better than The Crystal Skull, and I saw that a couple of times. So they are trying to set up maybe a couple of other characters where they can spin this off in a different direction. Obviously, um, they can't name it Indiana Jones because, well, that's just not going to work because Indy's got to have Indy in it, uh, of course. But I, as I said, I would watch a, another mo a spin-off movie with the other characters in it. One of the third wheels in the adventure story in this did an okay job, but wasn't really fleshed out. You could flesh that out in other movies perhaps. I don't know what the direction of this uh, thing is. I don't really care. I just was satisfied that I saw a quite decent indie action movie. And I'm going to have to, I'm definitely going to go watch it again and have to watch it again to pick up on smaller things that uh, I almost certainly uh, missed. But it was, I, I came out feeling pretty satisfied as a fan and I was worried going into it because I'd heard all about oh they're gonna time travel oh no and they're gonna oh the de-aging oh no and oh the Phoebe Waller Bridge character oh no and everything else and it none of those things turned out to be a major problem yeah maybe uh Helena Shaw's character was a bit OP a little bit but it, I think it fitted in with the story and I didn't really have a major problem with it. I liked her character. I think it added value, as did the time travel elements. So where does it sit in the, the, my list of uh, the indie movies? Well, I think it's better than Crystal Skull. I'm going to have to watch it a couple of more times to really get a feel for it and uh, properly rate it. If you want to know Sagan's rating, he actually puts it at number three after Raiders and Last Crusade now. So there you have it. Um, I... 
Can't say I disagree, there's going to be lots of haters. Oh no, Temple of Doom fanboys are going to come out. But having just walked out of it, I think that was a reasonably solid indie movie. I'm probably going to pick holes in it the next time I watch it or, you know, after the fifth viewing or something like that. But I can I just, I just enjoyed it. What can I say? So yeah, I'd give it about an 8 out of 10, at least at the first viewing, walk, just having walked out of the uh, cinema, I felt pretty good as an indie fan. So I'm off to play with my indie train set, not uh, in, in, in a happy way, not just in a, oh god, they ruined it uh, way. No, they didn't. I think I was pretty happy with that. So there's gonna probably going to be a lot of negative people out there, but as a fan, I enjoyed it. It's well worth paying money to go see it at the cinema. That's my take. Anyway... Leave your thoughts and comments down below if you've seen it or if you refuse to see it. I, I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you refuse to see this thing just because of the direction Hollywood's been going and everything else. Yeah, there's a few moments in it like that, but overall, I, I was pretty satisfied. But yeah, definitely go see it at the cinema. Anyway, thoughts and comments down below. Catch you next time.